Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot 2018.10.4. Uh, the test that you're looking at right now is not a test that I had done in advance. This is actually just dash cam footage of a drive heading back to my house from Denver that I took with my family. Uh, during that drive, the weather started to turn pretty south, so I went ahead and pulled the dash cam footage and stitched it together here in this video that I'm presenting now. Uh, because this was not a premeditated test video, I don't have my normal recording rig, so unfortunately I don't have a camera on the instrument display cluster. However, in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that I've added in subtitles, specifically captions, to let you know what the current status of autopilot is, if it was turned on at that point, or if it was turned off. I don't have the speed settings, unfortunately, memorized for the duration of the entire drive. But going back and listening to the audio prompts, it was easy for me to figure out which sections did have autopilot on and which sections did not. I drove the majority of this drive back to my house with autopilot on, um, only occasionally taking it off to make turns or to uh, initiate a lane change in an area where the nav unit did not detect that I was currently on a highway. And the section that I'm on right now, for instance, this is an exit off of I-25 going onto I-70. It had veered far enough away from the highway that I did have to take over in order to be able to get into the left lane to make sure that I started heading west on I-70 since okay. that was the direction that I was going. Uh, you'll see here that I'll take the autopilot off. There we are. And then the autopilot goes back on once I've gotten back into the lane. Uh, during the course of this drive, I was managing the speed manually. Uh, at this section, however, right here, I did let autopilot go ahead and drive at whatever speed it felt comfortable at, and based on not just the cars that were directly ahead, but based on also the turns that you see in the road, it did go ahead and slow down in order to safely take these turns, which is a behavior that I've noticed with hardware tube cars uh, happening a lot more often than I would notice in my old Hardware One car, at least with the software updates I had at the time that I owned a Hardware One car, which was back around the end of 2016. I got rid of my Hardware One car in November, and I took delivery of my Hardware Two car in December of 2016. So, unfortunately, my knowledge of Hardware One cars is a little bit outdated, but um, I'd be curious to hear in the comments, actually, from people who still have Hardware One cars, um, what the comparison is between the behavior that you see here in the Hardware 2 cars as far as slowing down aggressively ahead of turns even if there are no cars present versus just sort of uh, barreling into those turns at whatever speed it's set at. So here I did a auto steer lane change to get into the correct lane and I will follow this lane continuously until I reach the exit at which point I'll turn off the auto steer so that I can go ahead and take the exit, follow the exit, and then take a right turn to get onto a local road. Now. Autopilot, both on Hardware 1 cars and Hardware 2 cars, has been pretty solid in highway situations. That's rarely the concern. Um, in this particular instance, the dash cam actually has decent visibility, but from where I was sitting in the driver's seat, um, the lane lines were actually rather hard to see because the road was wet and there was a lot of glare, not to mention the um, rain, which was actually quickly turning into snow that was coming down in pretty big blotches, as you can see on the windshield. Right now, I do have the wipers set to position two with automatic wipers turned on. So the car is managing the windshield wipers. If there were no rain right now, the windshield wipers would be completely off. So leveraging the beta feature. Uh, and this is the level of visibility that the car has been maintaining, both for presumably my visibility as well as the autopilot's visibility since it's very heavily leveraging the cameras right now to uh, keep within the lane lines. The radar is also being utilized to maintain Distance, no idea what the ratio is between how vision is rated versus how radar is rated in terms of um, keeping distance from the cars, but it's doing a pretty decent job. Right now my speed's probably set around 65 miles per hour, and I have it set to notch three in terms of uh, car distance. So I've gone ahead and disengaged the autopilot. I'm taking the exit onto Federal. And I will re-engage the autopilot right after I get around this turn. So for the rest of this drive, it's all local roads. And autopilot was engaged for the majority of the local roads. I apologize if you see any skips in the video. Uh, that would be caused by a bump I might have hit in the road, which would have tripped off the G-force sensor on the dash cam, which in turn prompts it to make a quote-unquote emergency recording. The emergency recordings are basically the camera taking its current memory and dumping that to the storage 
in order to make sure that in the event that you get into an accident the camera's destroyed, you don't lose the instance of the accident. Now notice here, going very nicely around these cars that were parked on the side of the road, didn't slow down or assume that those cars were in the same lane as I was, but it did stick to the left lane line very well and move, maneuver around those cars without me having to disengage auto steer to make sure that I safely moved around the parked cars. So for the rest of the drive through this section, I got a little bit lucky. I didn't have to take over because I was following behind cars and those cars were slowing down for intersections and for stoplights. So since there was at least one car ahead of me, I was able to basically just leave the autopilot on for the entire time. And I was able to stay within the lane and not accidentally cross into an intersection at a point in time when it would have been inappropriate, such as during a red light. So in spite of the low visibility, it's doing a very good job. In that instance, the lane line came up after we came past the car that's directly in front of us. Uh, the autopilot actually saw the right-hand lane line right around the same time that I did, sitting in the driver's seat, uh, at which point it went ahead and corrected to center itself back in the lane again. So here the traffic is slowing down, coming to a complete stop for the red light. Autopilot does a perfectly fine job of that. Same thing again, lane line pops up, visible after uh, the white car or the metallic colored car, can't quite make it out, ahead of us passes, and as soon as it becomes visible to both me and to the autopilot system, it goes ahead and centers itself in the lane. As I was saying before, the lane line visibility was very poor at this point. Uh, it looks actually sharper in the dash cam than I remember it being when I was driving but the autopilot was doing a great job of staying within the lanes even though the visibility was somewhat low and you can see that the windshield wipers are rapidly oscillating here uh, switching back and forth between different speeds to accommodate the amount of precipitation that was hitting the windshield at that point in time so here it starts up again if i had one complaint about the autopilot in its current version and most recent previous versions it's that it tends to take a little bit longer than I would like when starting from a series of stopped cars to see the amount of gap that it allowed to um, get between us and the car ahead. Uh, right now I believe the speed limit is probably set to 40. It's definitely set for a little bit higher than what we're currently going at. So that is based on the tailing distance which is set again to 3. I haven't changed it. Uh, I don't change it about basically the duration of this entire drive. So yeah, it would be nice if it kept a little bit closer to the lead car when you're pulling away from a stop. It tends to let a fairly sizable gap get there, and it, which you know is not, it's not a bad thing, it's not something that's unsafe. It is something, however, that at least for me, when I'm falling behind another car and they allow a large gap to occur between themselves and the car that's immediately ahead of them, I get a little bit annoyed because typically, if I'm driving, I have some place that I would like to be at. And I prefer not to do things like miss green lights because the car ahead of me was lollygagging when they started up from an intersection again. So here we're continuing on. The precipitation starts to get pretty bad. It looks like it's mainly rain right now, uh, but that's just what's collecting on the windshield. In reality, it's rain that's sort of turning into a, a freezing slush. And very shortly after the end of this autopilot video, which is where I dropped my wife off at the um, train station so she could pick up her car, um, I actually lost the ability to use autopilot because I didn't realize this at the time, but I was getting an error message basically that said the front radar visibility was reduced, which was accurate. Um, I just didn't realize why it was reduced. I thought maybe this was an error, maybe it was having trouble with the cold weather, maybe there was something on the bumper. As it turns out, there absolutely was something on the bumper this rain that's not collecting on my currently defrosted windshield was basically turning into like a solid sheet of ice on the front bumper as I was driving. So slushy, snowy rain was collecting on the front bumper uh, and turning into basically a solid coating that coated the entire bumper. So yeah, I realized once I got home, the error message was actually quite valid. The front radar visibility would have been reduced because the entire bumper was covered. So here, uh, cruising along on a local road, which I have the speed limit set to 35 miles per hour. It's doing a perfectly fine job through here. No issues with the uneven lane markings that are coming up. And very shortly, I'm going to reach the T intersection that's going to mark the end of this video. So as I am crossing over the crest of this hill, 
car is going to be parked on the right hand side of the road and is going to slowly start to pull out into my lane. So as soon as he does that, the autopilot starts to slow down immediately and then come to a complete stop once it realizes the car has entered my path. And at this point, I have to turn off autopilot so that I can take over. And that's the end of the video.